how we can be led by can I hear you? And then we'll be also be discussing about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit or the gifts of the Spirit. Both of these, we are starting this on Wednesday and uh, some have been constrained because this is the last Wednesday in the month of July, if I'm not mistaken. Abby, is there another one? Praise God. Except you want us to create one tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I'm going to try to see how far we can go. If we cannot do very much, um, another time we'll continue in Jesus' name. Now, let me see how much many of us have been able to catch. Is there another mic? So, I will just hear from two, three, or four people sharply um, what you have caught about being led by the Spirit that we have been teaching. Who has something to tell us summarily? One or two things you have learned, you can remember, or about the manifestations of the Spirit. Nobody? If nobody raise hand, and we'll start all over from the beginning. <laughs> yes, sir. The sound is not picking. Media, please, the sound on the second mic should come on because people online we hear. It's very important. Please use the mic. Anybody watching online won't catch it. Praise the Lord. That God is a spirit and we are essentially spirit. And so God communicates with our spirit, the spirit man in us. And so if God communicates with us, for us to hear God, for us to, to understand God, we should know that it is in our spirit. The witness is in our spirit. If God wants to speak to you, if God wants to, you know, show you something, it's actually in your spirit. Amen. That we must understand that our spirit is the personality or the person in us that hears God and responds to God first. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise God. Thank you very much. So God speaks to us through our spirit. Any other person who remembers any other point that we raise? Yes, sir. Pastor Felix, can you stand this way? You are hiding. I'm not seeing you at all. Please stand on the eye, Lord. You are behind somebody. Uh -huh. Media, keep the mic working. All right. I remembered also that uh, we read up in Proverbs that the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Yeah. So that with our spirit, we connect to heaven. So looking at myself, I now said, if I cannot be able to get something, it's my fault. I don't have to blame God just to, you know, get connected and receive and move along with what he wants me to do. Amen. So we, we said that... Um Man is three parts, so I can explain the point he's making. Spirit, soul, and what? And body. Man is essentially a spirit. He lives in the body and he has a soul. And we say that with the spirit, he connects to who? Huh? With his soul, his mind, he connects to the intellectual world. What does that mean? The learning, education. When you went to school, it was with your mind. You learn in school. You learn a trade. You learn carpentry. The skill is in your mind, which is an aspect of your soul. 
And you move around, you touch physical things, the natural world, you relate with people through your body. So each one of them has where it contacts and connects. Amen. You need to understand. Maybe one more person so that we can make some progress. Any other person who has something to add to what we have been learning so far? Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I remember that you said uh, how we know if we are being led by the Holy Spirit. And we talked, uh, you told us about the inward witness, the conscience. And you said that the inward witness is that spirit of God that bear witness in our hearts. Yeah. That we are children of God and it connects us to God. Then the conscience, we are told that um, those who don't have Christ, that their conscience are dead. For those that are in Christ Jesus, our conscience are at at last, alive. And our conscience will always tell us that this thing we are doing is wrong. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, we say we can kill the conscience, not that it's completely dead. Praise the Lord. But for the person who doesn't have Christ, he has conscience, yes. But his conscience is not as alive as the person who has Christ. Are you together with me? Yes. And so the conscience of the unbeliever is not even a perfect guide like the conscience of the believer. I say somebody can kill the conscience. 1 Timothy 4.2 talks about people who have seared their conscience. To sear means to burn something, to chide. It can no longer become unvalidable. The conscience has been killed beyond repair. And we gave an example, we said, an arm robber who is killing somebody and collecting their property today must have started as a what? As a thief, stealing his mom's 10 naira, 100 naira. You get it? And the first time he does it, he feels bad. But because he never stopped, the conscience died. Praise God. And as he keeps going on, he hardens himself. The conscience has died. Glory to God. But for a believer, his conscience is more alive due to the life of God in him. And the second thing is because the spirit of the unbeliever is not connected to God, does not have the life of God. And we said that the conscience is actually the voice of the spirit of man. Praise God. Conscience is what? The man, your own spirit talking to you. Your own spirit telling you what is wrong and what is right. It's a guy that God has put in man to help man naturally. So when man fell and committed sin, it's still there. But it's no longer as sound as it was before the fall. Praise God. So, But for somebody who is a child of God, who is born again, he has the conscience, his own spirit to guide him. And at the same time has what? The spirit of God, who is the inward witness. In the second service last Sunday, I said something about the inward witness. I didn't explain it in the first service. I said, what is he witnessing about? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 verse 10. 1 John 5 10. He say he that has the son has the witness, or he that believes, first John 5 10. I just hope they'll be fast a little bit. He that believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believes on the Son of God has what? Where? In himself. Amen. Now in Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, Romans 8 16, the Bible said, the Spirit of God. Bears witness with our spirit that we are what? The sons of God, children of God. That means that the first assignment he does in your life is to tell you, I saw your name in God's record. You are what? A child of God. And we said he is a witness because he saw the reality of what happens. So he can tell you God's will, 
God's plan, God's purpose, God's direction for your life. At that moment, what is he witnessing? He's not witnessing your life. No, he's witnessing to what he has seen in God's mind. I don't know whether you're following me. Please try to understand. Eh? Choku? Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Come now. Obi. You know an officer now. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. If if um if up I know I know now. <laughs> I'm trying to clarify the example how we put it, put it. <laughs> if for example now Obina borrows somebody money. Yeah? Salas. Salas, according to Jerry. I bring the money. No, you go. <laughs> Praise God. All right, face him now. He, you know, if for example now he gave him something, and then you are there, you are his friend, huh? remove your phone, anything, just give him something. Ah, you dash me your car. <laughs> Did you see it? You saw it. So if tomorrow this young man denies that uh, Obina didn't give him anything, eh? What would this person say? He is what? To what? To when Obina did what? So he will say that the Holy Spirit is in what means a witness where? Inside me. What is he witnessing to? What he has seen in God. He's coming to tell me this is what I saw. Praise God. Give him back in key. <laughs> okay, let me show you the scripture to confirm that. I quoted 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9. Can we see it quickly, please? But as it's written, let's follow. You can give me New King James, no challenge. As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of what? The things which God has prepared for them. That what? Please look at this verse critically. Number one, I, talk to me church. I, number two, neither the imagination of what? Any man, the things that God has what prepared for them that love Him. So we are sure that there is something prepared for me because I love God. But no eye has seen it, no human ear has had it, not nobody has been able to capture it in his thought. Are we together? The next verse. But God has what? Reveal them to us by did you see that? He gives us revelation of what nobody has seen nobody has heard nobody has imagined. How does he come to us? Talk to me now. Through who? By his spirit. Then I have to relate with this spirit man. Yes. If I want to know deep things that God has for me I need to relate with the spirit more. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, even what? Deep things. So, he has access to files and folders in God that I don't. Is somebody hearing me? He has access to the files and folders. That no human body, no prophet. See, there is no prophet on earth who can tell you the deep things of God concerning you. Oh, you didn't hear me. That's the truth. They, listen to me. 
God does not guide us by the prophets these days. Because some people are looking for prophets who will tell them. Some people will say, open your hand. They begin to look at the marks in your hand. I hope somebody has not gone there here. We just find Cain for you. That's a lie. Anybody that will tell you anything is only to confirm what is already existing in your heart. Nothing new. Somebody tell your neighbor, nothing new. If God permits us, I'll show you a few examples. So that you see how God does. God led them in the Old Testament with the prophet. Do you know why? Because none of them was born again. None. None of them was born again. God's presence was locked up inside the tabernacle or inside the temple. And the Spirit of God comes only on three people. Three categories of people. The priest, so that he can offer his job as what? As a priest. And then the king, so that he can rule. Then the prophet, so that he can now give direction. When the king, Joshua, wanted to go to fight, you know what he said? Is there not what? A prophet of the Lord here. You don't need that right now. You don't need it. He said, is there not a prophet of the Lord here? And they gathered plenty prophets that don't hear from God. <laughs> One of them carry on prophetic action. <laughs> He carried the horn and said, you see, the way I do, that's how God will kill all your enemies. And the real prophet, Micaiah, was just watching them. And the king asked Micaiah, it was son of Ahab. He said, Micaiah, no, I think it was even Ahab himself. Have you? He said, Micaiah, it's Ahab. That was the fight that he went to and died. He said, Micaiah, um, when will you tell me the mind of God? What will I tell you? He said, you want to know the mind of God? Let all Israel go to their houses. Why I see them scattered like sheep. So the king told Joshua, I told you that this man would never speak good concerning me. Then the prophet said, you have not heard anything. Let me tell you more. <laughs> he said, I saw God open my eyes and I saw heaven. And I saw the heaven, heavenly, heavenly host. And God just said, who, are, who is the spirit that will go and deceive Ahab so that he will die in battle? And one spirit said, least, and one spirit said, this God said, no, you will succeed. And another spirit said, I'll go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophet. See, don't listen to lies. Tell your neighbor, don't listen to lies. Hmm. And God said, you, you look like you will succeed. Don't you know that? That's what he's succeeding now. Lies in the name of the Lord. King Ahab said, lock him up till I come back. Micaiah said, if you return, God has not spoken. (laughs) Hallelujah. But let me tell you, God said in his word that you are my temple. You are what? My temple. I am your God. You are my people. So where is the address of God? Talk to me now. Where? Oh, I thought you would say it's in heaven. He dwells in you by his spirit. Where? So if God is going to speak to you, he's going to speak from where? Eh? Somebody who is outside now hearing this sound coming from inside the hall. Am I correct? Yes. So that means that God will not speak to you from heaven. He will speak from where? From within you. So don't look outside at anybody. He lives within you. So he'll speak from within you, not from outside you. So you must be conscious that God is where? Within. God is where? Within. Somebody say amen. Amen. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We have read verse 9. We have read verse 10. Let's look at verse 11. Can you put a new living translation? No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own. Are we together? Please follow. And no one can know God's thoughts except what? Capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. 
Now, the next verse, verse 12. We have received, and we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit. Why? So we can know the wonderful things God has freely. Put the King James Version or the New King James. We have not received the spirit. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from who? From wait. The spirit came from from okay from God to me. To come and do what? To tell me what he saw. Written concerning me. You didn't get it. He came from God to me to tell me what he saw. That's why he is what? A witness. So if I want to take a decision that is contrary to what he saw, he will say no. Red. That's why he's the best guide I have. That's why if you follow him, he will make you rich. Hello? Yeah, he will make you pass exams. That's the truth. You will be reading chapter <laughs> when I, chapter chapter 1 and 2, when actually chapter 6 and 7 that will come out. I saw it happen in school. If I open it, I won't have peace. I will jump. I just won't feel like reading it. Nobody tells me or I won't feel like you know, I told you the way the inward witness talks is what? I perceive. I sensed. Just like a notch. It seemed good. I think this, uh, this chapter it seems, uh, I feel good about it in my spirit. Though, of course, we under sense, feeling of cold, heat, all those kind of things. That's the, feel, that's the language of the body. Praise God. Reasoning, reasoning, logic. This one, you calculate 1 plus 1 is 2. So, if 1 plus 1 is 2, then 1 minus. That is the mind. The mind calculates like that, but the spirit doesn't calculate. It just gives you the answer as he saw from the mind of God. So, that verse, put it back again. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know, that we might know the things that have been what? Freely given to us by God. So many people are struggling for what is already free. Verse 13. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. We understand that later. Concerning spiritual things, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Hallelujah. Verse 14. But the natural man does not receive what? Why? No, can he know them? Because what? This will point to the fact that if your spirit man is not developing, you can't catch the things of the spirit. Yes. You can't. We will look at that. So, we have understood two things. Number one, that God leads us through what? The inward witness his spirit dwelling in our spirit. And that one does not speak a voice. He leads us by what? Perception, sensing, a feeling in your spirit. Or like um, when we saw uh, Luke said, it seemed good to me also. It seemed good to me also. Now, the conscience, the inward voice of the human spirit. Sometimes you can hear as if somebody is talking to you in your mind. Am I correct? Have you heard that? I see somebody is, is inside you, but I see somebody is what? It's not the Holy Spirit. It is your own spirit talking to you. I see there's a second person inside you telling you something. There are times that you feel as if you are doing conversation with somebody. You are reasoning. I don't know whether you are swallowing me. You are trying to take a decision. It's as if you are discussing with somebody. Hello? And the thing actually is trying to guide you to take what? 
Yes, I see somebody is explaining to you why you should take this. It's not just reasoning sometimes. Sometimes your spirit man can speak to you. It's also your conscience. Hallelujah. And when you, when you learn to disobey your conscience, do you know what happened? That voice will be silenced. Yeah. Okay, let me show you a few scriptures. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I will not miss it. In the name of Jesus. Romans chapter 8. We'll read quickly a few chapters, a few verses. Romans chapter 9, sorry, verse 1. You will help me to bring it out. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. I tell the truth in Christ, I am not lying. Paul said, my what? Conscience. Also what? In the Holy Spirit. That's the conscience of the born again person. Okay, so we say the Holy Spirit bears witness. Here we are seeing. What bears witness again? Conscience. Conscience. That means that when I don't want to, it troubles me. Conscience is what troubles you. Now, let me make a difference. When you do something wrong, I think I said it last Sunday, and you feel bad, it is not the Holy Spirit that is making you feel bad. It is who? Your conscience. Your conscience is telling you. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 23 verse 1. Acts 23 verse 1. Then Paul looking earnestly at the council said, Men and brethren. Uh, he was before the council when he was called to testify, when he was arrested. He said, I have lived in all good conscience before God until today. What is, this? what is he trying to say? I try to obey my conscience. I told you that conscience will always warn you between good and bad. Sometimes conscience may even tell you a little bit, warn you of danger. So, some, somebody will say, I sense if I enter, if I, I get what I'm saying. Yes. They call it intuition. Because even sometimes you hear, maybe hear from, maybe you have relations who are not born again. Somebody will just say, uh, I don't feel like this journey. I don't feel like going home. And yet the person is not born again. What is warning him? It's his own spirit telling him. But the believer's own spirit is more alive to guide him. So I say the believer has greater advantage, the spirit of God and his conscience, which is alive. Acts of the Apostle 24, 16. Acts 24, 16. Paul said, and herein do I exercise myself. I, I, this being so, I myself always strive to have what? A conscience without offense. Toward God. Toward God. And toward men. In my relationship with men and in my relationship with God. We have mentioned about the fact that there are people who have the conscience that's dead. Okay, let me show you something. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5 and 6. 1 Timothy 1, 5 and 6. Now, the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart. From a good, and from what? A good conscience. Now listen. If somebody has a good conscience, it, must, it means he can also have what? A bad conscience. From sincere faith, verse 6. From which some, having strayed from obeying their conscience, what happened? They have turned aside. Why do you talk? Praise God. You will not turn aside. In the name of Jesus. 
Verse 19, the same chapter, verse 19. Go down to verse 19. Having faith and what? Let's go together. Having faith and which some have what? You know, I say people can reject their conscience. What will happen? Concerning the faith, they have what? Do you have another translation? New Living or Message or, or the Passion Translation? Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience what? Clear. For some people have deliberately done what? Violated their conscience. As a result, their faith has what? Shipwrecked. What is shipwrecked? Capsize. It's lost. That means that if you don't learn to obey your conscience, you can lose your Christianity. When you say their faith here, it's not the matter of believing God for something. Because Christianity is called what? The faith. The Christian faith. Hallelujah. So if somebody is violating, is not following, you can see, use the word violated, have deliberately violated their conscience, as a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. Has been shipwrecked. Go to the next verse. Look at the examples. I like the way the old King James said it. Okay. Hermanius and Alexander are what? Two examples. I threw them out and handed them over to who? So that they may learn not to. They were believers who? But the small, small, they have been violating their conscience until their faith, they no longer behave as if they are believers. Paul said, I handed them over to the devil. I said it on Sunday that if you don't obey your conscience in small, small things, very soon you will also not obey it in big things. That's how it is. Small, small signs they will give you. Keep your conscience very sensitive. It's very important. How? Be quick to repent. Be quick to do what? To repent. Don't keep it. Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. If God, if your conscience touches you concerning anything, Father, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry. Confess it. I'm very sorry. A very prominent man of God. One of my friends went to see him. My friend was sharing with him. Was sharing with me. He said, he left the office of the servant of God. Very popular man of God. The big denomination in Nigeria. And um, after he left the, the, the pastor's office, as he was coming downstairs, the pastor sent for him. He came. When he came back, he told him that, sorry, that thing I was telling you is not exactly that way. This is the way it is. He said that in touching. Just on a discussion. And this man is somebody down, down, down. As for pastors. I don't know whether you understand. He just says something and then his conscience speaks him that that's not exactly the way what you are saying is. He, he sent a staff to go and call him. Call him before you cross the gate. He came back. You know, I said, that thing I was telling you, that's not exactly how it was. If I call the name of the man of God now, many of us will know him. Because these are the small, small things that can block the flow of grace into your life. Some have violated and they have what? Shipwrecked. Has crashed their faith. Their journey has stopped. You can no longer see direction from God. Because conscience, it helps you to be sensitive. Now, if conscience is the voice of your spirit, and it is your spirit that we get from God, and now you have silenced your spirit, who will lead you? Even though God is willing to lead you, your spirit has been told to keep quiet. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Conscience is the voice of your spirit. The Holy Ghost will talk to you, not through your head, but through your spirit. And now you have told your spirit what? If you talk again. So even when the Holy Ghost tell him something, what will he do? He said, we should not talk. (laughs) 
So that's why the Bible says you crash your faith if you don't follow your conscience. You will not fail in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we said also that um, conscience improves with knowledge. Improves with what? Do you remember we mentioned it? That the more you know what is right, the better what? Your conscience. Paul gave an example in Corinthians, I think the first Corinthians chapter 10. He said, if you buy food in the market, meat, and they told you that this meat was sacrificed to an idol, what happens? Suddenly, you, something tells you that if you eat it, it is what? So the Bible says, eat without asking. <laughs> Are you following? Eat it without asking what? Questions. Now, there are two categories of people. There is somebody who immediately tells him that this meat was sacrificed to idols. Hey, it is salami. <laughs> I'm sure I've spoken to somebody now. <laughs> it's salami too. Oh, don't touch. There is somebody who has also understood the Bible says an idol is what? Is nothing. For there is only one God. He said, Abek, all food are sanctified by the word of God. That person, his knowledge has grown. His knowledge has what? Has grown. So his conscience will not be defiled. I don't know whether you are following. His knowledge has grown. So his conscience will not be defiled. But for the young convert, who is just trying to manage, if he sees you eating it, Hey, brother. <laughs> now, some of you are thinking that I'm not quoting the Bible. Maybe I should show you. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter. Okay, it's chapter 8. Chapter 8. From verse 7. Or from verse 6. Yet for us there is one God... And the Father of whom all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things, and through him we live. Verse 7. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge. For some, with consciousness of the idol, until now, eat it as a thing. Offer to what? Do you see that? And what happens? When they are conscious of the idol, and when they eat it, their conscience is what? Is defiled. Being weak. They have not grown in knowledge. Knowledge strengthens your conscience. Right knowledge. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Verse 8 now says, But meat, but food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, or no, if we do not eat are we the worse. So the most important thing is that verse 9 says, For a safe guide, but beware, lest somehow, this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to those who are what? Who are we? So if you refuse to eat salami, it's because the person next to you. Hello? I'm sure I preach to somebody who is confused. <laughs> it's because there's somebody around you who is weak, whose mind is what? Is weak. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says an idol is nothing. Can I hear you say it? An idol is nothing. Amen. So for their own sake, we just leave it. We don't have time to talk about that one. That's not our focus. I'm sure I've been able to clarify about conscience. Are we clear? So, and I said that God does not lead us by prophets these days. But does God speak prophetically to us? Yes. If God will lead you by a prophet, it will be a confirmation. It should be what? Okay, let me give you an example. I hope I wrote these things. All right. Hallelujah. 
Okay, let me tell you what prophecy is for. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. Let's read. Can we read together? He who prophesies, what does he do? Uh Uh-huh. How many things did you see? What does prophecy do? What is number one? Is to build up. Number two, exhort is to what? Encourage. And to what? Comfort. That's the work of what? Simple gift of prophecy. Amen. So if somebody come and say, I saw a grief. Mm. Grief. Grief. In fact, the coffin was black. <sighs> Are you comforted? Are you exalted? Are you edified? Throw that into dustbin. <laughs> well, well, it's just Bible we're looking at. For prophecy is for what? Exhortation. Ed- so if it does not edify you, it does not encourage you, it does not comfort you, it is not Baba, it is not, if it brought fear into your heart, it is not from God. God has not given us the spirit of fear. So anything that they say to you and strike fear in your heart, please leave that place and tell the person, pray for yourself. Oh. Maybe it's you Satan is talking to. <laughs> because many people couldn't sleep. Because somebody told them a lie. Somebody told them what? A lie. A lie. Okay. Let me tell you. Please quickly go to Acts 21. Verse 10. Alright. A certain what? Prophet. Somebody can have. Now listen. Somebody can have the gift of prophecy. It doesn't make him a prophet. I told you that time didn't permit us to teach much about the gifts of the spirit. So that you would understand that there is a, the office of the prophet. The prophet is a ministry gift like the pastor. Are you getting me? There are people who are called into the prophetic ministry just like a pastor or an apostle or an evangelist. But the gift of prophecy can come upon anybody in the congregation and say, Does this is the series of the Lord. I am with you, my people. Be comforted. He shall be well with you. That's how prophecy is. It's always speaking peace. It's always speaking calmness. Always giving assurance. So, but this man, a prophet is somebody who has the gift of prophecy in his life, operating. He has the word of knowledge. He has the word of wisdom. And he also may have the discernment of spirits. Above maybe other gifts. He has no less than what? Four gifts operating in his life. But somebody who just speaks the gift of prophecy can not have only that one. But somebody who has been called to be a prophet of God will have the word of knowledge. He can tell you what happened. What is happening. He can also have the word of wisdom. He can tell this what God wants to be done. He can tell you, he can have the discernment of spirit. God can open his eyes to see vision of angels, vision of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? He can go into trance, the discernment of spirit, and hear the voice of God from the spirit realm. That's the gift of prophet. That's the office of the prophet, sorry. So the Bible said there was a prophet, put that verse please, named Agabus, which came from from Judea. Go, Go ahead. When he came to us, he took Paul's belt. He took what? Good. And bound him, bound his own hand. The prophet bound his own hand and feet. He tied his hand. He tied his feet. The prophet, people were looking at him. He demonstrated prophetically. They want to call prophet Gashan. Thus says the Holy Spirit. So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind a man who has what? And deliver him into the hands of what? Who was he talking about? 
Let me ask you a question. Was that the first time Paul would know that he would suffer in Jerusalem? If you are a Bible student. Okay, let's continue. Now, when, he had, when we had these things, that's Luke was writing. Luke said, when, you know, Luke wrote Ark. He said, when we had these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go to where? But do you know that Agabus told Paul what they would do to him, but he didn't tell him what to do. What he told him was a word of wisdom. This is what will happen. But he didn't say the Lord said he should not go. Are you getting me? There was no direction. So prophets are not in the New Testament giving us what? Direction. We should know from our spirit what we should do. And what he was saying was not new to Paul. Now when we had these things, both we and those on that place pleaded with him not to go. So people say, hey, Apostle Paul, hey, they're going to bind you. Oh, please, no go. Look at what Paul said. The next verse. Then Paul answered, what do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be one, <laughs> but also to one, to die. For the name of the Lord. Look at verse 14. So what we will not be persuaded, we see, say, the will of the Lord. <laughs> Be done. Verse 15. Verse 15. After these days, we packed and went up to what? To Jerusalem. Now listen to me. We don't have time to check on. Everything that was they were saying, God has told him that he will go to Jerusalem and they will arrest him. So when the prophet came, the prophet was only telling him what God has what. So, and when he was arrested in Jerusalem, as they locked him up, you know what God told him? He said, do not be afraid. You will stand before Caesar. In where? In Rome. So, when he was going on the road and the sheep wanted to capsize, he asked God, what is happening? God said, don't be afraid. You will not die. The sheep will be lost. For you must appear before who? Caesar. So, when you know what God is saying, you will not be afraid. When they carry Joseph, now let me tell you, for, because we are going to round up now. When they carry Joseph and they throw inside pit, eh? And they were discussing how they would sell him. How they would kill him. You know what he came to his mind? God told me. These people will bow to me. I have not seen that happen. Is there something has to happen here. Because God has given me direction for my life. So very soon they removed him and they sold him. So anywhere he was going, the steps of the righteous are what? Ordered by the Lord. So as he was going, do you know that's why he was never bitter and angry at his brothers? When they came and he became king and they were bowing to him and after their father has died, they came to say, please, Mabinu, it was a mistake when we sold you. He told them, stand up. You people thought you were doing me evil. But it was God was that who was walking. I think Genesis 40 something. He said it was God that was walking through you to send me ahead to prepare a place for you. But you thought you were doing the evil, but God did it for what? For good. Why? That's somebody who knew that his life is in the hands of God. You are not bitter with people because you know you're in direction. So, Joseph kept his heart in order. Remember where we started praying? Sanctify the Lord. Your God in your heart. Let him alone be what? Your dread and your fear. If you keep him focused and you keep your conscience in place, he will guide you. When he allows anything to happen to you, you know that all things work together for good to those who, are, who love God and have been called according to his purpose. God will never allow what will stop you to come your way because you are in his plans. So God can lead you by dream. God can allow prophecy to confirm his leading. Hello? Yes. God can also lead by vision. Let me give you an example. In Acts chapter 10, because of time, so that we can close. Acts chapter 10. 
You remember Peter in the house of uh, what's that man's name? Tana was somebody. Uh huh. So and and then God appeared by an angel. God can lead by angels. Two way of leading in that place. Cornelius in Acts chapter ten from verse one. You remember Cornelius, the unbeliever centurion who was fasting and praying and the angel appeared to him and said your prayers and your arms your offerings have come as a memorial to who to god he says send men to joppa and they will bring somebody called peter let them call somebody called peter he will tell you how to be saved who gave him that direction an angel how did joseph carry jesus to run away it was a dream is that not so it was a dream. An angel appeared to him in a dream. That combination of two guides. So, can God guide us through dream? Yes. But if the dream causes you fear, ask put word, question mark. If it is from God, there is a way to rest in your spirit with peace. Something will be telling you that God is trying to tell me something. And then be praying about it. The more you spend time praying about it, the more the understanding will work will come. Some people, God has told them many important things about their dreams but, and from their dreams, but they are not serious about it. And you may lose vital information. God told um, the, the prophet, he said, what I tell you in a vision, write in a book. Write. What I tell you, you should do what? Write. A short pencil is better than a long memory, as they say. Because when you learn to write, because if, they, if, they did, if those apostles of all didn't write, we won't have the Bible. We won't have the Bible. Many of us, God has told you several things, but you are not writing anything. I have things as far back as 2012 in my iPad that God communicated to me. That's 10 years ago. Revelations of 10 years ago. I'm not talking about jotters. Though. My wife knows that. If you search my old diaries, in my drawer, I have some small, small diaries. Sometimes I stumble on them, but I discover I'm keeping them with, with technology now. I'm going with them everywhere. Because if I change device, I have a, a cloud storage that transfers them just with my password. So I just write it. It's there all the time. If I want to find it. I was sharing in Oweri during the pastor's training, early part of this month. I was given the privilege to preach. And I told them that they were talking about how, um, what was the topic now? How can I raise money for ministry? I said, the first thing is that you must know God called you. And then you must know that God is sending you. God is sending you. So I knew God called me and I knew God is sending me. And there's no assignment that God gave me that I didn't know before it happened. Including coming here to Abuja. I shared you when I, when I that time, when we were up there, I knew one and a half year that I would be, before it happened, that I would be in Abuja. I saw myself. That whole time it was even a dream. Among pastors, Osogari was there. And that they divided Abuja into two. Abuja has not been divided at that time. And I was given a placard holding one. He was holding one. I wrote it down. I only told this girl. I'm telling you, the only difference in that dream from the reality is that what I was holding say Abuja one, the one he was holding say Abuja two. So that was as I kept questioning. Then one day we were attending a meeting in Oweri, and there was an argument when the Bamisha was transferred to Kogi, Lokoja. So and the pastor from Lokoja, Ewache was moved to JKJ or where the headquarters of Kogi two is now. So. And then an argument arose in that meeting, pastor's meeting, in a worry, that um, where should be one, since the state is divided, and where should be two? Some people said the capital, the capital of the state should be one. And the other, local, if the other one said local government, should be what? Should be two. And then I said, no. Let's honor the pastor who was there before a new one that came. And let's call that place what? Where the pastor is. If he's at the headquarter, we'll call that place one. If he's not at the headquarter, no matter how the place is, we should call it one. Do you get it? 
That was the only difference. But in that revelation, I saw myself holding one. One month, one year, six months before I came here. And that revelation occurred twice. November 20th, December 20th. 2014. 2015, sorry. November and December 2015. Somebody from Sokoto is here. Tayo, you're welcome. God bless you. That's a youth pastor in Sokoto. Hallelujah. And the following year, April 1, we were in another pastor's retreat and Gio called me. He sat under the CWL guest house. It was not completed that time much as it is, but we were still staying inside. Not to this stage. He said, I should sit down. He said, I want to move you from Abuja, from uh, Sokoto to Abuja. I felt tempted to tell him, but I hold my peace. When he finished talking, I would then tell him, sir, God showed me. But I said, no, it's not your time. I'm telling you. Before I was sent to Sokoto, I knew. God spoke to me two weeks before the letter came. If your life is guided by God, it's sweeter. You are not afraid when you go to anywhere. You know that you are on assignment. So your dreams, visions, like we saw, he talked to Cornelius by a, by a what? A dream. Oh, no, he was praying and an angel appeared to him. And then he talked to Peter by a trance, a vision. Peter went to his prayer time. Both of them were praying. That means that it is prayer that helps us to receive from God clearly. Is somebody following me? Peter was praying. He was hungry in the afternoon. And then suddenly it's all kind of animals. It's all angulu. <laughs> okay, it's all vulture. It's all man out dirty animals. And God, the voice came, rise, Peter, kill. And he, he said, no, man. never chop this kind of thing. And God told him, don't call unclean. What I have called what? Clean. God was now trying to make a plan for the Gentiles. Because God was involving the Gentiles in his own plan. And he wanted them to start the mission to reach the Gentiles. At that time, Paul has not started his ministry. So Paul, somebody had to start it. And while he was still thinking about the meaning of that dream, Acts chapter 10, he had a knock. Come, 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 come. Yes, we're looking for somebody called Peter. Imagine that is word of knowledge. The, the angel, the angel gave that appeared to Cornelius, gave him the name of Peter and gave him what? The address of Peter, the town, the address, and the person who Peter is staying with. God can be that accurate. Is somebody hearing me? He said he's staying with Simon in a street by the seaside. And his name also is what? Simon Peter. The person you are going to. So they entered the town not knowing the place, and kept asking until they came. They knocked, and the man was there. You can't miss it if God is leading you. You can't miss it. If you ever got it wrong, God didn't speak. He's not a man that he should lie. That was how Peter was convinced that God wanted him to preach. No, nothing would have made Peter preach to any Gentile. Nothing. In fact, God needed to raise somebody called Paul to reach the Gentiles. Because you know that Peter argued. He said, this man who is arguing like this, he won't do this job. <laughs> Hallelujah. So open your heart. He can guide you by visions. He can guide you by dreams. If he ever leads somebody to come and tell you something, it is to confirm what? If you have not had anything, tell him that. Okay, I will pray about it. Go. And if you pray, 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 you didn't hear anything, put it in KIV. What do you call it? KIV, uh -huh. Keep it there. Until the day God speaks to you, don't take it serious. No matter how the person is serious, except you are backsliding. And you can't hear God again. Can we rise to our feet? Have we learned something today? Give thanks to God. Mm -hmm. Worship the Lord, pray in the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
In Jesus' name we are praying. Now let me say this as you package your offerings. Package your offerings. And your spirit man will remain sensitive if you have time to meditate and study the word of God. Are you hearing me? Yes. Because if you don't learn to hear the voice of the written word, then you may not learn to catch the voice of God speaking to your spirit. The written word is easy to hear. So if you don't catch, learn this one, then the one from your spirit will be difficult. I don't know whether you are catching what I'm saying. So that means to train your spirit how to discern whether God is the one talking to you. You must have time for the word. And then if God give you an instruction from the Bible and you keep it in view, you refuse to obey it, then he will say, how will I speak to your spirit and you will obey? So if you don't learn to obey the word of God that he spoke to you from the word, then you are hindering your spirit from hearing his voice to what? To obey. It's a training. You must train your spirit with the word first. Train your spirit with the word. Think about the word. To meditate in it means to think on it. If something occurs to you while you are reading, carry your pen and write. I type my own into my iPad. And the more I write, the more insight comes. That's the truth. It's like digging gold. You may see a sign on the surface. As you scratch it, you now discover that, ah, so there's more under. When you pay, take your pen to write, God say, she's serious. She wants to know more. So tell her. As you're writing, you discover, as if something is just pouring, somebody is pouring more to you. Why? Those who seek him diligently, he shall reward them. It's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And then take time to pray in tongues. But then you are building your spirit so that your spirit will remain alive. Because no matter how good your handset is, no matter the quantity of credit, you have 10,000 naira credit in your handset. If your battery is down, you can't receive any text. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? You can't receive any call. Abi, your handset is 2 million naira and you have 500,000 credit. But the battery is what? Can you receive any call? That means that if your spirit man is not awake, when God is speaking, you won't catch it. How do you keep your spirit man awake? Rabo, Chaka, Tende, Brondo, Sutelia. Pray most of your prayers in tongues. Yes. The Bible says, building up yourself in your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue does not speak to men, but speaks to who? To God. How be it in the spirit? He speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. Nobody understands him. But he's a divine himself. 